Good afternoon. It's another week, of, and of course, another topic on your popular current affairs program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. On today's edition, we'll be dissecting very crucial uh, national issues in the interest of the development of this great country. My name is Ego Sagmulao. I also want to introduce very eminent personalities with me on the show. We have the former Anthony General of Edo State, and of course, the former uh, local government chairman in Edo State. Abarisa Henry Idago. Nice to have you. On Good afternoon, today. viewers. I'm happy to be here. Okay. We also have with us a very seasoned uh, legal practitioner in a do state, and of course, a law lecturer, Professor Joe Odion. Nice to have you on set today. Good afternoon, viewers, and good afternoon, Edota. Okay. Now, on today's program, we'll be looking at very two national crucial issues. Every news outfit in this country is awash with the security situation in this country. The highways are no longer safe, and of course, the Nigerian police have intensified their patrol. A lot, a lot is happening. The Shite movement disrupted activities right there in the FCT, and of course, residents of the FCT became very, very apprehensive. They are scared if the Shite movement is about to take over the FCT. These are all security issues. And of course, the allegations against the headsmen in the country, the criminals on Nigerian countries, a lot, a lot of issues. But the question is, the implication of insecurity to the development of this great country. We'll be looking at that. And after that, we'll be looking at the, for the three nominees, ministerial nominees by President Mohamedou Buhari sent to the Senate, and since yesterday, the screening has commenced. Don't forget that the Senate informed Mr. President of their intention to go on recess on Friday. They said they didn't put pressure on the President, but they just needed to remind him that if they don't get the list, they will proceed on their annual uh, vacation. But the list eventually came out. So we'll be discussing all of these on the show. 60 Minutes Nigeria, let's get started. Implication of insecurity to Nigeria's development. We'll start with Professor Joe Odion. Do you think Nigeria is safe? Okay. Uh, so just to be a mistake when Nigeria is actually safe now. But also once Nigeria is unsafe, uh, more likely being in, in between. Uh, Nigeria ought to be safer than it is now, but it's not. Uh, our highways are not safe and even at home. Uh, we are all bottled inside the house, you know, with high fences and all that. The country is really uh, uh, not too uh, comfortable for some of us now. Uh, no people are actually thinking of leaving. Uh, with our embassies and all that, you see people are trying to live in droves. But that is not the solution. Uh, we were there before, but I think we will get around this issue uh, sooner than later. The country is not safe, and I believe that the efforts have been made to address some of our security uh, challenges. Uh, I just watched the snippet of the Senate uh, screening, and I discovered that uh, they took on the general who most likely may be the nominee for Minister of Defense. I'm also very comfortable that uh, the two ministers, the Minister of Interior and the Defense, didn't make the list this time around because those are key areas that uh, really shape our security uh, architecture and, of course, other issues within there too. So, Nigeria is not safe, we can make it better. Okay, thank you. I uh, will get the thoughts of uh, Barrister Harry Dagbo. Uh, the iron fist that uh, uh, President Mondo Buhari is renowned for, especially when he was uh, the military head of state. Do you think he has lost the knack to uh, use it to ensure the security of lives and property in this country? Well, I think we have evolved. Nigeria has evolved. Uh, Nigeria is part of a global village now. Okay. The Nigeria of Buhari's military regime is not the Nigeria of Buhari uh, democratic regime. Okay. Uh, so the tactics uh, that worked uh, that time cannot yeah. work now. Okay. We have a more sophisticated society. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's done well, but there's room for improvement. Okay. Uh, like my learning brother said, 
we are neither uh, safe nor unsafe. Okay. Uh, there is relative security in some parts of the country, while there is, of course, uh, heightened tension and insecurity in some other parts of the country. Okay. But the most worrisome uh, is uh, security on our highways. Okay. Uh, it is a thing of regret that uh, people drive from one part of the country to the other. There is no guarantee of them arriving at their destination uh, safely because of um, uh, high banditry on the highway. Um, the police force, you mentioned police doing a lot, but I, I think our police uh, force is handicapped. Okay. They can't really do much. I saw a video on, um, on WhatsApp last night, last okay. night. Yeah. A little girl, probably no more than 10, and he said, look, the difference between police in a different part of the world. In the United States, there's a criminal, the police will monitor, money monitor, until they virtually arrest him. Mm. Uh, in uh, Germany, the little girl said, uh, the police will accompany the criminal everywhere and eventually they will catch him. Yeah. Example, in Nigeria, there's a criminal, the police will arrest anybody on the street, they will beat him and beat him and beat him until he confesses to be the thief. <laughs> you know, only two get 10 year old, a comedian, yes. there was a girl, okay. and I found it very, very, very funny. And yeah. I shared it among so many of my friends and okay. contacted on WhatsApp because for me it was profound. Yes. Our policemen are being asked to tackle 21st century crime with 17th century instruments. How do you I, mean? It's not going to work. Yeah. How do I mean? Go to the first headquarters in Benito today. The highest technology that they have for fighting crime is the AK-47. The AK-47 presupposes that you have seen the criminal and the man is shooting at you, then you're shooting at him. Yeah. No, any other, they don't have simple cameras. There are a lot of gadgets. Security gadgets. It's a security gadget. For goodness sake, this is the 21st century. Yes. Why can't we have CCTV cameras in our city, even on the highways, powered by solar? Why can't we? In the United Kingdom or in any developed country, yes. practically every street is covered by CCTV. Okay. So when criminal activity is going on, they'll just they'll be watching so you. Of people saying uh, Fulani headsmen. Then uh, another group said, no, no, it's not full of the headsmen. Mm. If we have CCTV cameras, we know the exact people it, involved. On the full of the headsmen and the highway, mm. it may not be possible to cover, I, I'm not a security expert, okay. but from a layman point yeah. uh, perspective, right. to cover the highway, let maybe from beneath to Lagos now with CCTV. It okay. may not be possible. Okay. I don't know whether maybe drone technology or whatever. Okay. But what is possible that I do know of, and I've, I've experienced it. One day I was traveling to Lagos by road, and a uh, uh, little after Okada, all vehicles got parked. And they said in front of us, there were men or yeah. criminals on the way. Okay. And all of us got parked for like a, 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 an hour or two until vehicles coming from Lagos started coming at them before we drove past. Okay. If we have a chopper, an armor chopper, for just one can service the whole of Edo State. Okay. An armor chopper will be maybe at Ring Road there. Okay. And then a phone call comes to the chopper, there are criminals blocking the highway. In five minutes, the chopper will fly from uh, Ring Road yes. to after Okada okay. Junction. Since it's armored, yes. it can fly very low. Shoot the idiots. You shoot them. So we must take our security because you tie the question to the issue of development. Yes. Without security, there can be no development. Professor is able to come here to come and talk because there's some relative security. I'm able to drive from my village to come here now because there's already, if there was no security, I won't be able to get here. Mm. So security, there's a direct correlation between security and development. Okay. Until, we, until we tackle it, there will be no development. Because people will be afraid. You, you mentioned the shy uh, movement in Abuja. Mm. For the past three days, I have a child in Abuja. Okay. I told my child not to go out. For three days, she's been indoor. <laughs> Don't go out. I monitor. I call in the morning. Yes. I spoke to her this morning. Now I can tell you it's been raining in Abuja since yeah, last yeah, night. It's been raining. I, I, when I leave the studio, I will call. By the evening, I will call to make sure you do not leave the house. Yes. Is that uh, and she's supposed to be a student? She's supposed to she's supposed to go to the hospital. She can't. Yeah. So there can be no development. We have to invest more modern technology, contemporary technology for security. Days of just going to the police college in Ikeja, six months training, and you are then you mad. Then they give you Mac Four. Now AK for the seven one, you are a policeman. No, the policemen should be properly equipped. That's why I sympathize with our police officers. Okay. They are doing a yeoman's job that many of us here cannot do for Peters. They get killed every day. Look at a, a, a whole DCP of police shot in the head. He has family, he has children. He's dead, he's dead. As bad as our second country is, he may not get entitlement more than two, three million. By, and before, and I've met police officers who have been believed, before that money will be released, it will take another six, seven, ten years. 
So the family then, how do you encourage other deputy commissioners of police or other senior police officers to go and confront uh, such volatile crowd in the future? They'll be reluctant. So we need to, we need to work on our security architecture. Okay. We need to uh, bring them in tandem with modern technology. And we need to pay them well. OK. OK. Uh, thank you, uh, Barrister Henry Dagon, for all that. Uh, Professor, now we're looking at the development of the country. Uh, do you think with what is happening now, um, we hear farmers complain of uh, headsmen. You know, these are allegations. Uh, some cannot be substantiated. Why some actually come with evidence and all that. But insecurity, they are fairly fair. Only yesterday, in a press briefing, asked the federal government to do more. The only of Ife visited President Manu Buhari twice in Asura. All about security in the Southwest, that the Southwest do not want war. Now, we understand that the Vice President has uh, started visiting traditional rulers in the Southwest, all about wanting to cross fertilize ideas about strengthening security in the Southwest. A lot. Niger Delta problem has started. Now, do you think with what is happening, this country can get it right in terms of development? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, there's no state that can progress in, in, in the midst of the security. Okay. Security is a platform for development okay. in all sphere. You know, if you look at it from the investment uh, level profile, yeah. you talk about uh, attracting investors to the country. Okay. People come when they are not safe. You see, workers, uh, foreign workers are kidnapped uh, in their, on their site and they won't come. Nobody wants to come to a country that is volatile, that is not peaceful. They are not sure of you know, your movement. You know, that is physical security. Yeah. They will come, and then even if you look at it from the other aspect, our farmers too, food security is very, uh, them very important. Mm. It's, it's very uh, important to any society. And the farmers go to the farm, they can't farm. Our arable lands are dissipated by, 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 by headsmen and their, and, their, and, their, and their flock and all that. So if farmers don't go to farm, then you'll be shooting your food. And globally, even the stretch of food security. Yeah. And this is the government that is on the mantra of uh, agricultural development, moving away from uh, uh, the oil and all that, going to the going to agriculture. So if we cannot strike a balance, like I've said here before, we cannot strike a balance <coughs> between those who farm uh, farm crops and other uh, related uh, products, yeah. and those who also farm by way of animal husbandry. Because okay. the estimate too. I also told farm, like I said there repeatedly, uh, so one cannot claim to be superior. Yeah. There the, the must be a synergy between them. There must be an understanding. And so if we cannot strike a balance between both, of course, we all go hungry. Mm -hmm. But the, the health man brings protein, and you also have your own crops, so big in your arm and what have you. Yeah. So government must strike a balance. And if there's no development in terms of the, that sector, of course, you won't have crops, you won't have business too. And those who export these things, and those who employ uh, workers in the farm, we have big farmers around. Most general retire as farmers, most mm -hmm. retire as farmers. So farm is a very big industry too for employment and all that. So the, yeah. the drivers are there. And then look at other aspects. Who can travel? Okay. If you don't travel to do business, there are those who travel this day goes Benin Road almost on a weekly basis to go and buy goods. Those who travel in the shire almost on a daily basis to yeah. go on a weekly basis to buy goods. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about entrepreneurs. You say people should not wait for government, white collar jobs, start small business. The master comes out buying small, small plastic yeah. and selling. Goes to the then. The first time he, he bust he, he bust to Lagos, he runs into armor bars or kidnappers. How does that work? There's, there's, you know we are in jet, you can do a lot with our electronic, but it's, 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 you, can, you can't do everything. You have a board meeting in Lagos. I'm like, doctor, I said I won't come. I'm going to have to come. I said you must slide me. So it costs. F ticket is not easy to do. So a young uh, middle-aged uh, executive in an office who ought to attend a board meeting or fire a return in Lagos will insist on being flown to Lagos by his company. So that goes into overhead. See, a trip that will cost maybe 10000 you have to board, uh, budget about 100000 to do that. Okay. So it has a multiply effect. So that is why government must tackle this issue you know, seriously. Yeah. Like you already said, there are so many templates to tackle insecurity problems. But what you have mentioned is very key, development. So it's not, it's not anybody's interest. You can't lord over anybody. The man who says I want to lord over you with my cow or what have you, is coming fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. Look at Abuja, the federal capital territory. It's almost on a lockdown now. You can imagine the level of activity that has been shut down in Abuja because of this insecurity, because of the shite uh, confrontation. 
Just imagine Lagos is on the on the, on the Okay. Of now, the now just coming to the issue of child, I've just uh, tasked a foreman to the general who knows the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of the law uh, in terms of uh, government yeah. and the judiciary. Uh, don't you think the protest of the shy is needless, uh, Barrister Dago? If the president or if the executive arm um, probably allowed the bail granted to Ezazaki, don't you think this shy uh, protest would have been needless? Uh, maybe you need to throw more light yeah, maybe, on, on be, it. Yeah, before I go to the um, uh, shy and Ezazaki okay. issue, I'd okay. like to, I like to uh, throw some, uh, yes. uh, contribu make a contribution to what my learning friend just said. Okay on this uh, uh, S-men and cow heading. Okay. It, is, it is not rocket science. Okay. You see, they trained all over the world, all nations that have developed. And even before their development, and even while they are developed, yes. where problems come up, okay. people sit down and think it through. You know, how do we solve this problem? Yes. Entrepreneur has come up to yes. say, how do we profit from this? Because every problem in any nation, be any human being, any community, yes. is a potential source of income. Okay. Anybody that can provide solution to the problem is going to have money. Handy cattle That's for true. goodness sake should not be a problem to Nigeria in the 21st century. Uh, but the federal, uh, federal uh, government introduced Ruga. People yeah. kicked no, no, against no. it. Yes, okay. even if they kick against it, there are ways that there are other ways. Okay. People kicked against it because there was already tension. People yeah. believe their lands will be we taken be and then full and settlement will now be established in every state and before you know it, you now have an MI or a Seriki and all that stuff. But let me tell you, in Kwara State, North Nigeria, Zimbabwe farmers came there about 10 years ago. Okay. One particular one set up a cattle ranch. He had huge uh, hectares of land. Most of the land he plants with uh, sorghum, maize, and millet. Okay. Then he just a small shed for the cow. He said he brought 160 cows from South Africa. Yes. Today the cows are like 800. Is this existing? It's existing. He supplies all the milk, all the yogurt, and all the cheese requirement in uh, to, to Kwara and the neighboring states. Nigerians are the ones working there. They are just two white folks from Zimbabwe. He does not need rocket science, just one machine to make. They demonstrated how the milking process is done. They'll bring the, uh, the, something like a rubber, put it on the order of yeah. the cow, and then so they milk for like five, yeah. suck for five minutes. Yeah. You know, no rocket science. So even if our government fails to do this simple thing, can't we individuals come together, buy 50 cows, buy 20 cows, buy 10 cows, and grow it? The businesses that are multi-billion dollar businesses in America, United Kingdom today, most of them are over 100 years old. The founders are dead. You now have their great grand. Many of them started private limited, uh, private limited uh, company. They are now public limited companies. So we must begin to think. Professor can join with two other professors and start with five cows. It does not stop him from impacting knowledge in the university. Yes, but we understand that some cows are owned by prominent beneath people, even the ones. Uh, yes, sir. We, should, we should stop. We should stop. The 21st century is not for cows roaming roaming our street, streets. roaming our streets. We should be able to, if, you, if it is two hectares you are able to have, know how many cows that will be in the two hectares and, and, uh, and buy them. By the time you make more money, you begin to expand gradually. We, we, we as a people, we are not interested in growing business. We don't have the patience to grow businesses. We want to invest one million today and make 10 million naira return tomorrow. And that's why you had a uh, plan well and all these, uh, what oh, do you call them now? Ponzi schemes. Ponzi schemes. <laughs> because our people want to get rich quick. So, in my opinion, yes. in Edo State, we used to have a ranch, a cattle ranch in Agbe there, I think, in Edo okay. North, yes. set up by Agbe Mudia. Yeah, we used to have cows there. Yeah, Before government, in old Bini Kingdom, yes. there is not what we call Idui Suemila, the, the neighborhood where cattle live. It means we have cattle mm. But we don't have to be escorting them all over the streets. We should, we should contain them and confine them. It's business and it's money. It's not something we should lament over. Yeah. Let those who are resourceful come and then make money from the process. Okay. Now talking about the shite, okay. I completely agree. If we are running a democracy, democracy is based on the rule of law. Yes. And that simply means that everything we do in the country must yes. be done in accordance with laid down laws. Yes. Not whimsically, yes. not in accordance with our personal opinions and views. Yes. If Zaki was accused of a crime and he has been arrested and arraigned and is a bailable offender that he has been granted bail, for goodness sake, he should be allowed to enjoy the benefit of his bail. Because every accused person in this country is presumed innocent until his guilt is proved. 
And you cannot keep a man in, uh, perpetually in a prison when you have not proved his guilt. It's after guilt. That's when you say, okay, you have been, you have been found guilty. I sentence you to 10 years, 20 years, or whatever, depending on the, what the law has prescribed. So what's your advice now? My advice is that if a Zazaki has been granted bail, he should be allowed to perfect the bail, and he should be allowed to go home and attend his uh, trial from home. The ba bail are always conditional. It can be revoked. If he doesn't come to court, not just coming to court, if he doesn't come on time, as practitioners we've seen, yeah. magistrates and judges revoking bail, yeah. court sits by 9 a.m., court wait for nobody. You can wait for the court, but court doesn't wait for you. And you are an accused person, you come by 9.30 a.m., the magistrate or the judge will say, your bail is revoked. Because it's a discretion of the magistrate. The law can keep you permanently in prison until your trial is over. Yeah. But because of that presumption of innocence, that's why you have a right, uh, 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 you can be granted bail. Okay. That bail is a discretionary uh, activity that should not be abused. If abused, it will be revoked. Okay. So I am advising the federal government, because Abuja is our capital city. Yeah. It is the flagship of cities in this country. I've met so many friends and colleagues who come from abroad. They will tell you the only city they can live in Nigeria is Abuja. Because that's the city that has a semblance of, uh, of development. Yeah. It's unfortunate that for three days or four days, I gave an example with my own uh, child, yeah. who has strict instructions from the father, don't leave your house. Okay, we understand because that. I'm, I'm afraid. There's peace today. Uh, well, I, I will give extra two days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be sure. okay. Well, I, I want to thank you. Uh, we'll be introducing our third guest, but that will be after this break. Uh, don't forget we have another very crucial issue to discuss and that is the ministerial list a ministerial screening uh, ministerial nominees sent to the Senate. the screening is ongoing and we have a lot to talk about that but we'll introduce our third guest after this break it's always a delight to have you on the program i hope you are enjoying our discussion uh, just joining us is a former a member of the Edo State House of Assembly, uh, Honorable uh, Fidelis Ogbejele. Uh, nice to have you with us. It's my pleasure. Okay. To you. So, we'll be looking at the second topic for our discussion today, and that is the ministerial screen. It's already ongoing after the nominees, uh, 43 nominees sent to the Senate by President Mohamed Buhari. Almost two months before he did that, uh, that's an improvement on his first term as president. Uh, <laughs> we'll come to Professor <laughs> Job. Professor uh, Job, yeah. um, almost two months, the president eventually sent for the three uh, nominees to the Senate. The screen is going on. Are you satisfied with the number that returned uh, from his first term? Well, well, if you about being satisfied, yeah. definitely not. Uh, because we believe that he ought to have rejected the cabinet this time around. And then those who have been given the opportunity to serve, and even if they, if they, if they have done so well in his own estimation, mm. and you have not shared that view with him, and so what should have done have been, have, 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 have brought new hands. Completely. Uh, not, not completely, you can okay. retain some persons, but, but not that kind of number that was retained. Almost half of the previous cabinet came back. If you take about five or six that were astounding, if we were to do maybe an assessment, in a class, you can hardly really have more than, after the first, the first five persons in a class, the other persons are not uh, high flyers. So the best five would have been the best uh, to be retained, in order of their performances. But those we saw there are not persons who generally would agree that they did very well. In truth, that's really it was. So let me not be compensatory. I can't imagine somebody who has done good, who has been governor for eight years, a senator, a senator for four years, and now and been made a minister again. So for 20 years in, in our landscape, I can't really pinpoint his uh, achievement or roadmap in terms of. Uh, country's development. So that is why some of us were not too impressed by the fortune of persons who were returned from the last cabinet and of course uh, others who are there who are first timers. So it's not really an impressive uh, cabinet, uh, both with the timing of the list and then the personnel put forward and then most importantly because we still have this crude method of not Family, I mean, say, and nominees or tie them to portfolios. So the okay. screening going on is more like a charade. Just ask questions <laughs> and assuming you'll be Minister of Health when you get you're just a doctor. It may end up being Minister of, uh, <laughs> minister, minister of the Communication. Yes. So, so that which is not good enough. Look at what's happening in Britain, which people are singing about and all that. See? We should incorporate best practices. Uh, so that is, let me know. Okay. Thank you so much for now. Thank you, Prof. Uh, let's get the thoughts of uh, Fidelis Ubejili. 
Uh, looking at the ministerial nominees from President Mohamedou Buhari, of course, the screening is ongoing. Are you satisfied with it for the three nominees, or you have something else in mind? Well, uh, he has done what he wanted to do. Okay. Obviously, nothing, no, nothing any person can do about that. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate our members okay. who were appointed members of my alumni association. Okay. And Busali University. I okay. think we have two slots there. Okay. Some of them are from where? Uh, the okay. Barista Kiamo Festus. Okay. It's a product of from uh, Delta State. A, a, no, it's from Delta State, it's a product of uh, AAU. A -A and Clement Agba is also a product. Okay. We congratulate the them for being uh, for, for being uh, appointed. So I'm no it's I'm the cham current chairman of Bini branch. Okay. So we are happy that uh, uh, new breed, okay. energetic product of AAU okay. have been given a slot. Mm. And we assume they had track record, they will perform uh, well. Coming to the question, okay. President Buhari, it took him about six months the other time to send the list of ministers. Yeah. And even Dix, he was compared to do it. The Senate threatened that we want to go on two months' recess. If you don't send this list to us, we may not be available when the list would come. Okay. That was when he eventually sent the list. The list came, the old order. How do you mean old order? 75% of former ministers, they were all returned. But the president said he wants to appoint people in office. He knows. He says so. Okay. Knowing people is not a criteria of appointing a minister. You are a single soul. How many people will you know? Minister appointed through recommendation and track records. Not just because they work with me, it is not an avenue to compensate them. Those I know. If you say you want to bring those you know, we're headed to do them. Those you know may not be the best hands. The screening that is ongoing, what are we expecting from them? They go to screen almost all of them. Successfully, because, successfully they, they will screen all of them. Well, the president who has submitted name who is going to be there and say, please, it's my nominee, it must be so. And eventually they will be screened and they will be successful in it. And their portfolios are not even attached. You are screening someone who may have been be good in sport, you are bringing him to head. And at the end, will just be matching time. That may not be the best, at least for this country. The president should not come with the idea that those I know are the people I am going to bring. Why will it take him two months to, do, to, to, to look for those you know? So. I'm not satisfied with uh, what he has done, okay. but there's little or nothing we can do about it. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to you, but let's get the thought of Barista Harry Dago. Well, yeah. uh, the good thing is that Fidelis Ogbejeli, my friend here, yeah, has yeah. screened people before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As a member of the State House of Assembly, he has screened people, so he yeah. knows the nitty gritty okay. of what is going on now. Yeah. So he knows it. Well, my thoughts on this is that. In contemporary times, yes. I will give three examples. Okay. Last month or two months ago, South Africa had an election. Okay. President Cyril Ramaphosa was re-elected. In okay. 48 hours, his cabinet was ready. Yeah. The biggest democracy in the world is India. Okay. I was shocked. Only recently, I learned this. I learned that the election takes seven weeks. <laughs> it's seven weeks to conduct an election in India, <laughs> and because oh, about a billion people vote in India, yeah. and in 72 hours, the cabinet was ready. Two days ago, Boris Johnson became Prime Minister in the United Kingdom. Yeah. And while he was making his acceptance speech, after accepting the Just offer... Just yesterday. Before, okay, was yesterday it? became Prime Minister. Uh, okay, officially. Yesterday, yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yesterday officially became yeah. Prime Minister. Yeah, that was on Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah. but he became Prime Minister yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And he already named cabinet. major uh, cabinet. cabinet. Yeah. And then the vision for his government and even tied it to 90 days. Yeah. That is the ideal situation we should look forward to in this country. If you are a governor, the period, during the period of your campaigning, you should already have people that you are going to appoint commissioners. Okay. And the same thing applies to the president. Yeah. If while you were campaigning, you watched uh, Professor Dion on television, you like him, you send for him, you pick his brain, ah, Professor, you will be my next attorney general. If 
the day you are sworn in, I don't see what is difficult in sending to the Fidelis of Wedje, uh, Wedje, he uh, successors now, <laughs> send it to them. These are my nominees. Yes. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see why it is difficult. Secondly, I hope that after President Buhari, we will have a younger president. And we will have an era of having younger ministers in this country. Okay. Like he said, ministerial appointment should not 100% be made on political consideration. If I were president of this country, even though I'm older than the age now that I expect the next president to, to be, okay. but if I were president, for example, if I don't even know, I will Google successful Nigerians in the United Kingdom, successful young Nigerians in the, in the US, in Asia, even in Nigeria. Okay. Last month, a 34 year old boy, 31 year old boy became a senior advocate in this country after 34, yeah. after practicing for 11 years. Yeah, I want to believe that he's brilliant. If he's not brilliant, probably he will not be where he is now. You can pick him. They come and be attorney general because you need to be minimum of 10 years at the bar to be attorney general. Let us see that your brilliance. There are Nigerians engineer, there are Nigerian engineers who are constructing roads, building drones for the American military. Robotics and everything. In the field of robotics. If I were president, I will send for this uh, Brigadier Agmon Lahore. I hope I got the name right. Certainly an adult name. Yeah. Who is in charge of uh, building drones for the American military. Or is the person I will get to come and be minister of uh, defense. I don't need to know him. I don't need to. Is intellectual output is enough for me to know because we, if we need development in this country, yes. all hands must be on deck. Even if it's your enemy, you know that your enemy can help push your government forward in this country and bring development to our people, then you appoint your enemy. It doesn't need to be, but there are so many ways politicians can be patronized. Yeah. And I am one. There are so, it is not only uh, about being the ministers. But I will say that I am personally happy for the quality of the two ministerial nominees from Edo State. Okay. Because I know them. Dr. Hanire. Dr. Hanire. Dr. Dr. Hanire uh, trained in Germany for 20 years to become uh, a consultant in medicine. I have lived in Germany and I know the thoroughness. Even to train as a driver, to train as a, a barber in Germany, yes. it's, it requires a high degree of the Germans are reputed for that. Okay. So he's a very highly qualified, highly sought after medical doctor. Okay. The, uh, the, the drawback is that he's not a politician, you know, aristocratic, not the friendly people kind of person. Yeah. But in terms of competence, you can fault him. Clemanda is a fantastic technocrat. When you talk about technocrat, Clemagba is one. Very highly competent. Of course, the manager is Chevron. We all saw what he did in Edo State as Commissioner for Environment. He was responsible during the uh, 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 as Commissioner for uh, uh, environment, environment in this state for the roadworks and for the drainages done in Edo State. And I say that because I know. He was responsible. He's a man that is at home with intellectualism. So, I am so happy that the two persons nominated from Odyssey State, they are very competent persons. And let me take this opportunity to thank our revived monarch, the Omonoba Nedoku, Akolokoloba of Benin, or by Wario Giligan II. Don't forget, he was the one that traveled to Abuja. I repeat to me that Mr. President, that they know we deserve two ministers. Since 1999, we've never had two ministers. No. We've only had one, no. most time Minister of State. No. Minister of State. Even Dr. Yanire was a Minister of State. But I want to intervened. And uh, like nature, he doesn't activate. Our Alba doesn't activate. He went to Abuja. And less than two weeks after his intervention, we go to the result. We're having for the first time two ministers. And it is my prayer that the state as a whole will feel the positive impact of these uh, two ministers uh, by the time they will be leaving office. Okay, thank you very much, Shedagmo. That was very expository. Okay, uh, let's come back to Prof. Now, the screen is on. What are we expecting? There is uh, a lacuna, which of course uh, we understand that uh, some members of the National Assembly are already talking about it. Uh, the issue of the president attaching portfolio to nominees. Yes. Yeah. But it has not been changed. It has been the order. So do you think what is going on now will reflect positively on Nigerian's development? Well, see the issue of development, it definitely okay. will not because uh, you are screening people without portfolio attached without minimum benchmark for who goes to that ministry or that ministry. So you're going to end up maybe finding square persons in round holes and all that. A lot of misfits will be, be there. Okay. Uh, like my brother has said, there are so many brilliant persons now in this cabinet, but they may end up in the wrong ministry. And okay. that will hamper their capacity and their effectiveness. Mm. So, so, so I think that we should move beyond this idea of just speculating on which ministry you are going to head as a minister 
or send a list that is blank and can open check. Okay. Uh, but I think the book actually starts at the National Assembly too, because it's not just about the executive arm. If the executive arm doesn't want to send ministerial nominees yeah. with portfolios attached, they can amend their rules, their own ground rules in the House. So yeah. National Assembly, National Assembly, Senate, for example, because they are the, you have the part of the screen. So mm -hmm. we will not ask this from Mr. President if you do not attach the portfolio to this uh, list. The executive arm will comply because they need you to screen these people and get them on board. Just the way they said we are going on recess and this was sent uh, almost immediately. Because so if you just if you just attach uh, a, 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 a portfolio to a minister, we will not screen him. If that's a part of the ground rule, you make it dead. It's extant. So no no person will say I'm yeah, being withdrawn by this particular set of Senate nights. No. It's part of your ground rules. Just we have your ground rules, okay. If you're not a ranking member, you cannot be elected if you're what have you. It's there it's part of your ground rules in your national assembly, it's Senate specifically. That should be the first starting point. And then that can I engender a culture where we bring ministers based on their on their on their, on their, on their, on their competence, their track record, and say, okay, you are not a minister of works, you are an engineer. People will take you off. There's peer review. And not just the Senate doing screening, I think we should move beyond that too. We should also have, since it's being uh, televised live, like, why don't we bring the members of the public to also ask one or two questions? Okay. We <laughs> use that as, 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 as a way of also measuring their competence. Yeah. It's not just about you asking questions. Because even if, if in the Senate now you don't have experts, it might be an engineer and you don't, you, don't, you don't have the engineering body there represented at the screening. So we can take it. This work we did 20 years, 10 years ago, it's been, it's been 40 years last year. Okay. It's not just by saying right petition, no, it's, it's open, it's peer review. Okay. But the matter is going to the highest, uh, because we are presidents go for debates, before they are elected, if the debates are actually properly conducted, they are government for debate. So if a minister must be appointed, the man is not be elected, so it's an automatic uh, slot. So it should, move, it should go through more scrutiny. We should not be tied to your business. They can invite people to also assist them in screening. If they attend the portfolios, they can get the best. So that the man who appears to be very sound legally may not be as good as Okay, well, thank you, Prof. Yeah, yes. uh, we'll come back to you on uh, some other issues about this screening. Um, Fidel is super jelly. Now, uh, looking at the, uh, the ministerial nominees, uh, 43, there's an advocacy group for those living with disabilities. And they said none of them included in this uh, ministerial nominees being screened. No, no fiscally challenged person. They are Nigerians, and they are not also. Then another advocacy group for the women folk also believe that the number of women in this um, nominee list is not encouraging. About 15 percent. They were actually expecting about 30 uh, percent. They also inch the argument on the fact that during elections, uh, the number of voters, women are more. Uh, what's your take on this? What well, the Whatever they're asking for yeah. is legitimate. Okay. I said that a pressure group or an advocacy group. Okay. But the issue is unconstitutional. Okay. The discretion to appoint lies on who has sent the list. Okay. So they are whatever they are asking for. You must not just be a minister. There are other positions in government. They should ask for because uh, the head. The, 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 the minister is the head of a, para, a ministry. Okay. Eh? But the, 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 the bulk of the job is actually handled by the technocrats, the civil servants. You have a PS, you have a director, you have other uh, uh, members who are responsible for the day to day administration of that yeah. ministry. Okay. The minister is a, a, a head. These persons, yes, they have right to agitate for. If the president feels it is uh, wise to do it, it's discretion on him to okay. do that. Yeah. Because they are also Nigerian. They are voters as well. Okay. Uh, but that is not constitutional that uh, what they are asking for is not the, a right. It's just a privilege. Okay. If the president decides otherwise, so be it. But you can't compare him to taking such a decision. Okay. So as a follow-up to that now, uh, what do you think should be the way forward? Are, are you... Uh, do you think with what is going on now, uh, the right persons will be given the right positions? You remember uh, some persons actually criticized President Mondo Buhari uh, for a former Lagos State uh, Governor Fashola who was reputed for doing very well for Lagos State. Some persons believed he couldn't really perform his optimum uh, because he had three ministries uh, under him. Uh, do you it's, see that kind of scenario coming up again? Well, it cannot come up now. You hear my 
the chairman and uh, former uh, uh, our attorney general. attorney general of the state. Yeah. That cannot happen in Buhari's time. His prayers now, when he spoke a while ago, was when the gods after him <laughs> bring in an energetic person, young at heart, mm -hmm. that can transform this nation. Okay. Not from Buhari. Because his idea are cake enough that will not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but there is no. Uh, to some Nigerians, uh, Buhari is performing. You can't what? really say it's performance is relative. Okay. okay. You see it the way you see his performance may not be the way I see it. To expect Buhari now to come to this age and do what he's doing, I was uh, watching a social media something about Africa. The man yeah. was criticizing Africa that in other world, 43 years. They are president of that country, yeah. but Africa, 90 years. <laughs> what are you expecting from such person? Experience. Experience? <laughs> to the, because his idea is more to the grave than to the living. Mm -hmm. So we cannot expect so much from this government. But may God, after him, yes. bring someone who is young and young at heart. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Bazari Dagbo, yes. I, I want to... Uh, direct your answer yes. uh, to somewhere. Yeah. Now, we've noticed that some ministers did not come back. We don't know the yardstick. Mm -hmm. Some returned, but some did not come back. Dan Bazoa, Minister of Interior, mm -hmm. did not return. Mm -hmm. Ibe Kachuku, Minister of State of Petroleum, did not return. Are you satisfied that these set of former ministers did not return? And others, uh, like Rotimi, um, Lai Mohamed, and others returned. Well, if I had, if I was the president, yes, I would return that bazaar. I will not return him. He's not returned. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So I support yeah, he's not coming back. Okay. Uh, the day Festus Kayamo was appointed as the spokesman of the presidential campaign, that's the day Baker Chuku lost his job, you know, as minister, because they are both from Delta that's State, that's it. and it was clear where the preference of the president went. And don't forget that Ibe Kachuku actually had his tummy. It's Tommy Blocks time yes. in the Ministry of uh, Petroleum. 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 So that he didn't come back uh, was not a surprise. Uh, you mentioned Fashola and Thrift. Fashola was a super, was a super, was a super yes. minister, minister yeah. okay. in the first, uh, in the first uh, term. It was like uh, a jack of all, of all three and yeah. master of none. He was minister for housing, power, and uh, works. And works. Mm. And it was too much. He performed excellently well. He was my contemporary investor of Benin here. Okay. Great guy. Performed well as governor of Lagos State. But I cannot say his performance as minister first time was great. And I believe he had too much to chew. Okay. So now that we have a larger um, uh, executive body uh, list, I believe that the portfolios will now be distributed. No minister will preside or pretend over one ministry. So of course, first of all, may not be for work. Somebody will be for... Uh, 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 power, somebody will be somebody else yeah. will be for housing because we now have enough to go around everybody. But the the point must be made, and that's the point he tried to. We must get to a stage where we have younger people as president and as ministers. We must have people who are who are who are who are efficient with modern technology. Okay. Uh, executive uh, 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 memorandum should no longer be done by you know I, like when I saw a minister I, I, I on the last day on the last day of their city okay. I was with the minister of it yeah. while I was in the south they brought uh, oh, <laughs> it, 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 it was like this Bucky. it was like this the <laughs> one was telling us that they had to go and read this you know, before they you know yeah. really big it should be by way of email. Send email from the cabinet office to the ministers. They read them, executive summaries. Then they come and talk. The president should be able to look at Obama, for example. Obama was the first president in America to actually uh, tap the internet as a resources for as a tool for campaigning, and it worked. So we need younger ministers. We need younger president. We need younger governors. A time we come when people like myself and Fidelis, we don't have to we are told that we should be <laughs> supporting them from the age. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. but talking about age now, yes. uh, Senator Elisha Abo is um, <laughs> regarded as the youngest senator in this Senate. <laughs> he was accused of assaulting a nursing mother. Uh, does that not dent 
the issue of allowing young people to hold very sensitive positions? No, no, no. We cannot judge the young people of this country no, with Senator Abbo's uh, uh, misdeed or his okay. criminal uh, assault on the, on the female in a sex shop of all places. Okay. I hear he's just 41, and he's the only one. We need to have a Senate where 50, 60 percent of them will be like 41 year olds. And we have so many responsible 41 year olds in this country yeah. and outside of this country. So many people are hard working. Yeah. You know, so that one misbehave is not enough for us to rule out all the other. It's time we must devolve power to the younger generation. Okay. You know, like you mentioned about the African president. Somebody became president of Austria at the age of 37 or so, 30 something uh, last year. Yeah. France. Uh, Macron. Yeah. The wife is even senior to him. Yeah, <laughs> for the yeah. How old was uh, Obama when he became president? Now former president of Canada. Uh, okay, the look at the, 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 the uh, Yes, you know. You know so, so what are we saying? We, we need next election 2023 for goodness. We need an under 50 year old as Nigerian president. Okay, we look forward to that. Your closing <laughs> remarks, uh, Professor. Okay, thank you very Joe much. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, well, so I want to plead with the government to take issue of security very. Okay. Very serious, but I'm yeah. happy that uh, they said they are clearing the Ogya road now. And they start coming back home, uh, those states. Yeah. Our roots. The, the CP at those states and some other to, security agencies. To, yes, security doing taking that. very seriously. I feel like I first was in those states where okay. we reside, and then nobody in the federal government should take it very seriously so that our kids and kids outside of those states should be safe where, wherever they are. And then the minister has been screened. Where, like I said, the, the, the names are already before the public, they have been screened. When they come on board, they should put the nation first. Should work hard to rejuvenate the country and ensure that we don't have this kind of sluggish, you know, development as we had in the first step. Okay, thank you, um, Fidelis Obejele. Your closing remarks. Well, uh, let me thank you for giving this opportunity to yes. be here. Okay. The issue of security mm. should not be taken by just uh, one session of the uh, 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 one session. Mm. We cannot say police or soldier. Should be we, all of us, okay. must be responsible to ensure that security is uppermost in this country. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, when you are traveling now, looking back, looking front, you are afraid, you don't know who will jump out from the road to say stop there. This, the federal government should take this as a priority. Security. Because if you are not secure, there cannot be development. You can't grow in an atmosphere of rank, of insecurity. Yeah. If we are all secure, development will be, be will, will be there yeah. none of us is secure today for for, for when, when, you, when you are going you s try to look everywhere because we are living in fear mm. that is not what it ought to be okay but god give them the wisdom to, uh, to tackle much. this issue of security. Your, your closing remarks we've uh, been treating se we've been treating security issues with kid glove okay. it's time we engage security with bare knuckle boxing no take the gloves off yeah and one way of doing it is to introduce technology mm. You know, that malam is done well. He's had to relocate to Ovia Forest. He doesn't need to relocate to Ovia Forest. From his office at the police headquarters, he can know what is happening in Ovia Forest. And it's not only the federal government. The state should, as a matter of urgency, think about buying armored uh, choppers. Hmm. We want to start with. By the time you start killing these people, when these people know that they, they, their life is at stake, when they go out to a robbing, they will stop it. So we, we, should, we should engage security headlong mm. because it's a fundamental requirement that must be present before there can be any development. Yes. The ministerial list, they have to do their best to join Mr. President to take the country to the next level. They just have to do their best because things have not been so easy and uh, we, we need to feed some fresh air in this country. The average Nigerian needs to... They need to, we'll be sleeping with one eye closed. And that's no sleep. We should sleep with, with our two eyes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Gentlemen, you've been very wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, your contributions on this program, <laughs> tremendous. I must uh, say that. And I believe that our viewer out there watching uh, the signals of your Dallas station in the United States, in the UK, uh, different parts of the world, and of course uh, in Nigeria. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's uh, discussion on 60 Minutes Nigeria. If you did, Keep it dead with me. God willing, next Thursday, we're looking at other national issues. Until then, have a wonderful weekend ahead. Bye-bye.